Okay. So, so uh, we'll, we'll bow them in. So we're going to do it over on that side. So we can do a long, a distance bow in and to start the class. So, all right. Okay. Ready? Bow. Salute. And they're doing the Tai Chi hit, but we'll go over there. So um, we're going to do the eighth form from beginning to end first, and Rob's going to run through that with you a couple of times. And then we'll start the stick. Okay. So you can go in there. Just for cool, yeah. You what? I forgot your belt. Okay. So you haven't been eating enough chicken pot pie. <laughs> Okay, so you're gonna. So the cameras are on. Um, might as well run through. So, so this camera is there. Uh, Brian, there's a camera right there. So you shift this way a little. Rob's gonna lead you through that. Uh, camera's there. So it's just running. So you just go through for, for, for review. Maybe do it a, a couple of times, and then um, uh, then, we'll, then we'll go into some of the, the basics. Do a couple of sequences or some of the sequences. These just go over and over it. All right. All right. Go ahead. If, if you want to correct any of the movements, you can do that too, Fuku. That's a lot, huh? Boy, that's a lot, yeah. Yeah, just remember as much as you can. See see how much she can do on her own, and then you know when to stop. <laughs>
Yeah, he's, I got one there too. So he's good. Uh, no, it's got oh, this uh, Tai Chi weapon, Tai Chi and staff over here. So, yeah, so we'll go through a basic drill first and then we we'll just, uh, so, so you know, when you, when you look for a stick, generally it should be about this long, but they're all mixed up in some of the long ones. Or so, but for learning, you know, it's not critical at this point because, so just, just spread out a little bit so that you can, uh, so, so this is called a double-ended staff. Uh, well, I mean a single-ended staff. There is a double-ended staff. And a double-ended staff typically is, a, this is being filmed. So anyways, uh, a double-ended staff typically is you're using both ends. So what we do in this form is actually it's more one side dominant. So the front side is typically the side you're using to strike. Although we have some movements where you actually will use both ends or at least you slide toward the center and you can turn and so forth. But it's really getting um, some coordination and maneuvering. So one of the things with staff is that uh, there's no cheating as far as which hand you're using because you you're holding something that's going to just tie your two hands together. So, so it's actually pretty helpful to get your two arms working together. Right? So you know, one of the things that we do is um, try to get build the coordination direction. So when we stand, say go into an offset horse stance. So we have this hand that holds it at a position like this. This hand is by the hip like this and this hand is in front like this. So then when you have you drop your elbow, the stick kind of pulls to the right and then if you push to the left and then to the right, you notice that the lower hand is sort of the fulcrum or the pivot, the point that holds that other. So you're really only moving from side to side. And this is your right and your left, and it's kind of centered between there. So the center point is right where your nose is. That's your center line. Then we move to the right, and we move to the left, and move to the right, move to the left. Now you try to keep the stick as level as possible. So that means that means if you look at my hand, sometimes it's down here, sometimes it's here. Because when you go across like this and you don't somewhat adjust both sides, then it's very hard to keep it level. Because if I, if I just do this, it may stay up there. Whereas when I sink my elbow and go like this, it actually gets a, a little away from here. So it does change a little bit between here and here. But that's something that you'll adapt to as you get more familiar with doing it. And the other thing is, in the beginning, don't, you don't need to put too much power into the movement, and you don't want to be stiff. Because right? if you're stiff, the two sides won't work together. Right? So when we're here, it goes one, two, three. All right? From here, it drops like this. Okay. So this is actually a position. And then you go one, two, three. Now push this hand out and you see the stick go across. Then press down like this and then go back to your center. Right. One, two, three, four, down, across, up, and to the center. Okay, so that just gives you the, the points that we use as a a target or a reference. So you have this side, you have that side, this side, and that side. So those four moves are exactly the same. Now when you drop it down, this hand goes up. You push out like this. It goes up like this. Then you go to center. Or even when you get to here, you can do that again. Two, three. So there's horizontal, eye level, down to 45 push out to this side. So when I push to this side, it's from this left side to this right side. And then when I press up, it's from that 
point to this point, and then you go to your center. Okay. So the better you do those movements, the better it's going to show up in your form. And what you're doing is regular. So it's so it's kind of like if you look at it, it looks like a seesaw. One, two, three. And then it goes is a seesaw. So this is like the fulcrum. Then this is your center pushing, and then this is going up, and this is going down. So what is it? When you have a pivot point, it becomes a fulcrum. It also produces leverage. So when you press down, it's going to make the other side go up. The other side goes down. This side goes up. So there's that that action that you know works between this and your body, and that's how we maneuver through the form. So we, let's review that again. So so this is one, two, three, four. Okay. If you you want to be on this side, then to this side. So when we go up, so it doesn't matter how many times you do this, but end up on this side. Then go down like this, and across, down, and let's go back to that corner. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, up, and down. Now when you smooth out the movement, it's going to look like that. Three, four. One, two, three, four or three, four. This would be sort of intercepting, intercepting, striking. So you strike typically on the center line, right? So just to give you an example of how the stick goes, Rob, then go, come over here. And if Rob just held his stick out, just he's there. So this goes this, right? If he were to poke toward my face, it would be like this, you see? See what I mean? If he did the other side, it would be like that. Okay? If he poked over here, it would be like this. You see? If I lifted it up and I took it over here, it would be like that. If I strike at him, it would be like that. So that's that's how the stick kind of works. So everything is, it's virtual striking. So you really, just like our fist forms, you're just working toward positions. And positions are geometry of position. So the better you dial in your positions, hey, come on, I'll see, you, see you next time, the, the better your action will be. Then it goes down, then it goes across, you press down and strike. Okay. So the, the stick doesn't do this kind of a thing where both hands are doing it. It's either one or the other is generating the movement. You see, so it does take a coordination and your body kind of reacts to that. So one hand becomes a pivot point, one hand becomes a driving. So, okay, so you get the idea? So that's something that, you know, if you don't have a stick at home, you can get a broomstick or, you, you know, I don't know if your parents want you to be swinging sticks at home. You might be breaking everything, but if you have a backyard or something and your neighbors don't complain, you can go outside and practice. You know, not in this kind of weather, you know, but, but it, you know, you always can come here and do it. So, you know, when you're here, you, you have spare time, you grab the stick and you do this. The weapons actually takes a little bit of space. So then you're down, across, press, and then we're here. Okay, so that's something. You got that memorized? Sort of? Okay, Rob's going to go through all that with you later. Anyways, so this is the other thing, right? We're going to go like this, and we're going to poke. So you notice we sit back to the rear back stance, line up your stick like this, and then push forward, okay? So if you look like this, it's gonna, you're going to push forward. Now when you push forward, look at your hand, right? It's not like this, it's like this. So you want this knuckle to be on the top of the stick, or some people actually put their finger like that, so they use their finger as a guide. But we don't do that because your finger ends up as a target. You can get whacked in the finger. That That's pretty, uh, you know, that's pretty painful. And that's what, when someone does that, I'll just show you how that works. If we block like this, you poke here, right? If I block like this and his finger's here, that's going to be the target. So you say, well, your hand's going to be a target. And it is. But, you know, you don't want to get whacked in the finger because it's going to, you know, it's gonna, first you're going to drop the stick. So that's, you know, what, one of the things. So hitting the body is not always, you know, uh, the goal is just to disarm your opponent. So the other thing is, you know, when you're like this, and when we poke, sometimes we poke, we poke at the feet usually, and that's when you would do that. 
So that's you know sort of the um, you know the the tip and the sides of the, the stick. All right. So when we're here, we're going back and we're poking down, and here's your center goes to to your foot, and you pull back and you poke. So that's something that you, becomes a coordination, and you thrust, and you pull back, and you thrust. Yeah. So the thing is. Yeah, if you use too much strength and it's uncoordinated, it's going to do that. So you just want to thrust. You know, if you play billiards or pool, it has to be very smooth, right? When you, when you stroke the, the, the thing and you go boom, it has to be very accurate. So that, that, that's on this side. Actually, we're on this side, so it's different. When you do the spear, then you, it's like you're playing pool. You're on that side. So the spear is a left lead, the stick is a right lead. So it depends on the weapon. The spear is the, the, spear's the one with the tip on it. What was that? Now, well, with, yeah, so st staff is very specific to your, with the right side power side. This is your power side. So when you, when you do it's like this, uh, well, I mean uh, spear, but with the, this, this side does a lot of the movements. Because so, so it's really kind of on the right side, strength side. Because if I pull like this to block and I push, that's my right arm. It's my right side dominant motion. When you're on this side, it's usually being driven like this, like a spear. Your hand is actually using this side. So it's always using your right side as, as a spear. But they call it spear left, staff right. Now, when you get to the long pole, then movements happen on both sides. Because the long pole, this is historically, that that came from the Yang Sao spear, the, the Tai Chi Yang Sao spear form, modified into a staff form. That's how Hong Ga uh, got the long staff form. And then, uh, you know, the Grand Master had added some additional movements from another staff sy system or another staff set, and that gave us the left sides. Anyways, that has nothing to do with this form. So when we're here, we have this one, two, three, and I said go to the left side to drop because that's what's going to happen. Then you're going to pull like this, press down, and then push again or push to the center, and you have this thrust. Okay, so that's basically uh, the strokes. Okay, now when you move your hands, this this is your coordination. That when one is like cranking, right? You see, so look at this, is, it's like you're rowing a boat, right? So this is called Lao Sui Stick. Lao Sui Stick, Sui is water. And this staff form was created and it was also developed for a lot of the people that were maybe um, running those junkets. You know, the, you ever see those little the boats in Hong Kong and they sit in the back and, and they're just kind of pushing it along? That's, that's what that is. Because the fishermen practice this, the staff form. So that, so that gives you an idea that this is a, a form southern uh, farmers and, or fishermen use this. So this movement, so we're, let's stand like this. We swing it around, we're crossing like this. It comes up and down. So we swing it around. Swing it around, swing it around, curly cross, lift, strike, turn, turn. So once you turn, it gets the vertical. You go slide up the stick like this, and then slide down the stick like that. And that's the hand movement, but it actually goes to a suspended stance. So we're here like this, and we strike down. So if you notice, if you look in the mirror, when I swing it around and I end up here, it's resting on my thigh. So Bob, you got a camera beside you. <laughs> so yeah. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna. Those are the basic movements you can. You know, that, that's called the big circle. It's like throwing a fishing net. That's what the movement is like. Yeah. And you're here. Yeah. So. Um, that's the first two movements in the form. 
and then uh, it moves on. And all the moves that we just did are part of that first section. So if you want to see a little bit of the opening, we can well, I'm gonna do a little bit of the opening. You can do it over here. So it starts off like the second form. That's why it's the Lao family. So he starts off one, two, three, four, and he comes up, goes one, two, three, four, five. He goes like that. Slice, that's Lao. He does the big circle twice, then he pokes down, he steps up, pulls back, strikes, one, so that's the first section. The other side's the same. This this form is just like your second form. It does both sides. It repeats. So that's what a form you know does. Is it teaches you to do movements and uh, you know you build the sequential events. So so if you want to do the opening of the first the form first, because that's typical. You guys remember that, and it has all the Hongar movements, and then. Maybe do the first, uh, you know, after the big circle, if they can do that, then you have the one, two, three, four, five, which is that first section. Uh, might be too much for one session, but if you want to go through that with them, you can do that. So Rod's going to take you through the opening uh, first, and then do the first two big swings, and then see, see how they pick it up. If 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 it's too much, then you just do just back off, and it, yeah. Rob, you want this stick? You want this one? Or are you gonna use that? No, it's up to you. It's up to you. Use the one you want. Here's another one here. That's all.
Oh, yeah. But uh, they, they're actually learning it, so they're just going through it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. How's it going? Yes, honey. Were you able? Did you? Were you able to find out when the birthday was? Or no, yes. they didn't tell you? Or they? I think she's away. Oh, who? Karina? Karina? Yeah. Oh yeah. Do you need to get my wife? No, it was just. Uh, no, Kathy said she wanted the the picture, so I was going to take the picture today, but I forgot. <laughs> You know, and I think, yeah, the nineteen twenty-five. I think it's around nineteen twenty-five.
Okay, we'll see you. All right. I guess you'll be here, here Friday. You'll be here tomorrow probably. So Seth, you staying for this class? No? Okay. Uh, Rob. <laughs> well, anyway, do a few, start a few warm-ups. So they asked about two person, uh, Tai Chi. Tai Chi. <laughs> well, you know, I think, well, what I'm saying, is I think it has to be scheduled as a Tai Chi class. And the other thing is, we got to review it. How can it's got, you remember? I mean, can you teach it? It's hard. You need your partner. You need someone to do it. So, I mean, I'm not opposed to people doing it because when we tried it back in the day, um, only a few people were able uh, to, to do it. And, and uh, so, you know, I mean,
three. One, two, three. So, okay, let's do that again. We're trapping. Lift. Now hold this, sustain this. Feel. Up and down. So, so what are you looking for feeling? So when you say feel the movement, what does that mean? When you're like this, and you're moving this way, so your intent is like this. So we're moving laterally across. You would feel as if this and this is connected going in this direction. So, right? Yeah. So then when we get to here, lift and down. So you have to move to your left to turn to the right. So because we're moving across and we're moving that way, essentially we're moving to the left and then we turn. And then we turn. And then we step. So you move to the right, turn to your left. Sit. We're in the left, so we turn to the right. Cut. Sliding step. We're in the back, we go to the front. We adjust the back foot. We go from the front to the back, or to the side, right? And then we thrust, and back. Then we, fr from the back side to the left, we go to the right center. We pull back, we drive it down, and we sink. Pull back, then we go to this side. Two, and the same thing applies. One, two, kick, roll, right? Going to the right, one. Two, three, four. Lift. That's to the right. Now go to the left. Move center. Go to the right. Turn to the left. And push. Adjust the back foot. Go to the side. Go to the opposite side. Come back to the same direction. There's turning and there's pushing. Pull back. Draw and down, lift, turn, and turn. Then you go to the center. One, the hands over on the right side, you move to your left. You move to the front. You draw down, two, three, you sit back and you turn slightly to the left, and you go back into the center. You turn, one, that's moving to your left. We move to the right. Forward. Two. Three. Four. One. Two. Three. Four. One. Two. Three. Strike. Turn to the right. Touch to the left. Go up. And back and forward, and back. Now the wrists are bent here, so yeah. And go forward, turn and spread, but still looking toward the front. Now turn and push. Drop the elbows, now sink, and back, across, down, and around. Press and up. Okay, adjust your feet, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, stomp, cross, cutting hand, push, close, hook, butterfly, push, turn, Cover and big. Adjust. Turn and low. Do the other side. Hook. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Left side movements, one, two, three, one, two, three, 
full. Cut, cross hands, and push, thrust. Okay, draw back and push. Okay, ready, hook, ready, hook. So, press and cross hands, uppercut, chun kill. Sliding step punch, turn an elbow. Okay, adjust one, two, back fist, and butterfly. And turn and close. Turn, chun kill. Sliding step, punch, turn, and turn. Okay. All right, deep breathing. So sequence is sequence. All it is is a series of movements house, housing a bunch of postures and we link them together. So your goal is the, the linkage is, is really the beginning, the end of one posture is the beginning. Next, that's how you string it together. Then you try to build the, you know, the mechanism that strings them together. And then the muscle memory, you know, we hear the term all the time, but in, in reference to why I talk about muscle memory is really muscle memory is really skeletal memory skeletal memory is your joint angle positions so you create a hoop you create all these positions but when you go through the form are you conscious of your positions when you go from point A to point B you know this fundamental position low position low middle and middle high and high we have these Positions, which is skeletal positions. What controls the skeletal position? All right, what controls the skeletal position? <laughs> Your center controls the skeletal position. Lawrence, what controls the skeletal position? Okay, so... Yeah, so so your skeleton your skeleton is controlled by your muscles, right? So we, we, people don't actually think about it, uh, think it through like that, but that's what it is. So that's really proprioception. Proprioception is your sensory system controlling your musculature to tell the muscles what to do in speed and intensity, and also regulating what you've learned through visuals. We learn most of the movements through visuals and copying. Now everybody's ability is different. That's why we all look different. We don't always just look different because, um, you know, facially we're different. We, look, we see it different because of perception. What we tell our body to do, the body either cooperates or it doesn't cooperate. So if it cooperates, then it kind of looks like what you thought you saw. But most of the time, we don't really know if we're looking like what we saw. Right? We just assume it's like that. So you look in the mirror, and then I hear all kinds of like different, uh, you know, oh my God, oh, you know. Uh, I didn't know I looked like that. I didn't know, I didn't know when I push my hands out, and what, when we do the deep breathing, that it's like that. Or like that, but you know, so that's what happens. So when we go through a form, your goal is to understand what those shapes are, and you would understand it better if you know what the purpose of it. So a high block is a high block. Your forehead is your center. Boom, it goes there. You come down here, boom, it goes there. Boom, it goes there. Boom, it goes there. So that's muscle memory, but in transition, it's a sequential memory. Sequential memory is the order in which those movements happen. So those things happen because we do it repetitiously to create the sequence of events, right? So when we're doing a movement like in a form, there's so many things happening simultaneously. So upper lower coordination. You know what upper lower coordination is? Uh, Irina, what's upper lower coordination? Because I throw these terms out at you and, and everybody's hearing them, but if you know what they, how it's interpreted, it, it helps in your practice. Irina, what's upper lower coordination? Can you give me a sample of, or 
explain what you think it is? <laughs> How about Tom? Upper lower coordination? Okay. So yeah, so so essentially what your body's doing is building a relationship, right? Your your body is kind of communicating with each other basing um the fact that they're supposed to be integrated and working for a certain timing, right? So how does that happen? That relationship becomes the joint the primary movers. So your wrists and your feet, or your your hands and your feet, that works together. Your knees and your elbows work together. And your shoulders and your hips work together. They're kind of similar joints in, as far as anatomically, but the thing is, they have to sync up because that's the relationship in the body. So what is syncing up? You know, it's like, if I'm swinging my hands like this, that's a syncing up. The syncing up of the shoulders and the hips. When I do this, this these are tight guys. When I sink like this, my elbows and my knees are working together. My elbows and my knees are working together, right? When I go like this and I grip my feet and my toes, then my hands and feet are working together. When I go like this and I lift and drop, my elbow is folding, and so do my knees fold. When I sink down, then my knees would drop as I relax my shoulders and sink. So that's upper-lower coordination, where the upper body and the lower body are working together, right? So upper, I could sink in the same direction as compatible direction. I can spread as a separation, like when we're doing say, drunken fists. I can separate like this when I'm doing a water punch. So what's thinking? Well, the arm is straightening, that is straightening, right? So that's that's what upper low cord is. So, so the whole premise of doing forms is to build that awareness in your movement and build that coordination. So you're, you're building consistency and accuracy of movement, right? Consistency and accuracy of movement because if you're using this as a martial art or using it for self-defense, the most important part of that is accuracy. Because you can't hit your target if you don't have accuracy. So what do we use as a, a guideline for focus? It's our center line. And then we veer off that center line. We have two corners, one on the right and one on the left. So those two corner positions is a spatial awareness of where your body has to go. So where does your ha body have to go? It goes from right to left, left to right. If I go to this position and I just lift to Song Gong Siu like this, there's no left to right. It's just forward. And if I'm sitting back here and I go like this, that's forward and back, right? But this doesn't look right, I don't think. Does it? Does, is this what, does this look right to you? The position's right. If you take a picture, it looks pretty good. But if you're watching a video, it's not so good because there's no dimension and emotion. So typically what happens to get to that position is we come from another position. And what's that other position? It comes from a horse stance. And it goes to a leaning stance. So what is that? That's a turning from the left to the right. So why would you call that left? Because it's left of the right side. So when I'm on the left, I move to the right. But then what do we typically do? We go back to the left side with a motion that's tied to the upper to the lower. So you know what that is? Is It's a, a relationship, but it's also a posture with a, a, a position that's forward and back as a cycle. So if I just did this one, two, one, two, that's the same action, just cycling through. Which was first, which was second? It really doesn't matter. Because if I'm here, I'm here. When I'm here, it's here. So the relationship, the elbows, this is rounded. I'm in this position. There's a position 
There's a structure and there's a look to your posture. So posture has a look. And what's the look? Structural integrity of position. So when the movement is correct, you'll have a certain alignment, right? So if you go into your Song Gong Su, if everybody went to Song Gong Su, that's your target position. Your target position is a high block in front of the forehead. This hand is in front of the sternum. Should they be even, if you lean a little bit forward, and this, this can be a little rough. So they're almost in the same plane. Now you've see, you see people that do this, that's in some, could be correct if you're reaching and turning a little bit more. But if you're turning, so it should be j just about, could be a little bit. So you, so this is your center arc, this is your upper arc, right? So that's, that's your target position. So just looking at Ari do that move and do that again, right? So the position's good, but he goes back, turn back again. So when you come out, when this goes up, and this comes to here, you want to push from here. So in other words, when this comes up, goes to vertical to horizontal, you see? So because, like you throw a punch, when you throw a punch, you're like this. You want to keep your elbow down as long as you can for the flat punch. That's called a ping choi. When you punch, it goes like this. If you take that same action and you turn it to a wrist, that is like throwing you a punch. You're, you're focusing on this because the arm is the, the movement. What you use as a surface of contact is really your edge of your hand. So when you come like this and then you turn, that finishes this position that ties to this. On this side, it finishes this. And that's tied to your, your back. But when my hand sinks, this is rounded, this is connected like that. This is extending in this direction as if it was coming off of this side. So you have that relationship in your movement, right? Uh, no, that's not a, that's more of a, that's more like this. That's more of a lift. So what that is, the exchange between movements is usually vertical to horizontal, horizontal to vertical, right? So horizontal elbow is more to the side. Vertical is more on the downside, right? Because the elbow is down. So if I'm in a horizontal, I go to vertical. See? If I'm in horizontal here, I go to vertical. See, or oh, this is vertical to horizontal, sorry. So elbows out. So your your relationship is a constant between those two things. Now, on the legs, the relationship is a constant between bending and straightening. And then when she reverses that, the straight goes to a bend. So that's just a natural course of action. So going from leaning a horse, horse to leaning, is why we have to make that transition. So to go from square to triangular positions, right? Or you go from vertical to horizontal. So the triangle stance is the leaning stance, the bow stance, right? You turn it back, that becomes a saving mark, the 50-50 stance, but it's really not 50-50 because it's transitional. You're really sinking and turning. So the two hips have a relationship the two shoulders have a relationship. The two hands have a relationship, and it cycles between. Now, what, triangle, yeah. A triangular stance is because it's, it's called a. The triangular stance, yeah. It doesn't look ex. It doesn't look exactly like a triangle, but the thing is, it's called a triangle because you have point A, B, and C. So it's A, B, and the feet is C. Just like we're in a triangle here. This is still a triangle. It's called flow and it's called sam gotlet. Three corner position. Three corners, it's really A, B, and C. So what's the advantage of a triangular position? Right? It's a wedge. So a wedge has a geometric advantage to something that's coming directly at you because it hits the side and it dissipates or it's redirected. That's what they do in highways, you know, when, when two roads split, and 
they put like a triangular thing there. Why don't they put a square there? Because when a car crashes into it, it's going to be dead on. Now, they put that wedge there. It's not really a safe thing for the other guy because when a car deflects it, it actually goes off and careens off that point. But for this, it's good for redirecting a force. Now, that's just the... That's just a static position. When you're moving, you're creating the triangular position to redirect force by changing the direction of your movement. So if I'm flat like this, and she's pushing here, this is the, this just one hand, right? This this is the this is that barricade in where the two roads meet. You're gonna crash, and then the force is direct, right? But I make a triangle. So how do I make a triangle? I turn, I sink my, I don't even have to push, I don't push this, I drop this. So I sink the elbow and I go to this position. So we have a triangle position like this. This, we're like this, that's triangular too. And we move to here and then we separate the hands. So when we go from here to here, to here, to here, and over, we're going through those triangular positions because you know, for one thing, we can't move any other way anyways because our, our joints are connected. So if I go like this, it's round as a circle and the, the strength of the position is here, but actually it's angular too if I flat like that. So now it's triangular like this. This is slanted up like this slightly, but because my shoulder's down like this, it has a triangular position this way. See, so you're body's constantly forming these triangles, but we don't understand them just looking at it, but you can understand it when you kind of maneuver through it, right? So when we're like this, that's triangular. So the four, you're here. So when we're here and my hand is crossed like this, there's 90 degrees like this, well what if I do this? Now that becomes an angular position, right? So this can slide like this. So then when she pushes, it comes like this. But because maybe the angular position is not great enough, maybe I have to, she comes in, I sink. So that's following the, the line like this. So what does that do? That dissipates force. See, so when you're using functional movements, really work using you know, your position and direction of motion. So if I'm here, right, no, just uh, to the sides. So I, I can, if this one she turns, so really it would turn me like that if I'm stiff, right? Sorry, sir, what did you want me? No, you can do that. I go like this. I sink. I sink and then I turn, right? So you see how when we do this, or this, or this, how we use our our arm, which is your bridge. So when you do Kung Ji Kun, and your forward position, we're here, one, two, three, four, lift, pull back, turn, lift, sink, Turn, step, strike, cross, open, step, thrust, cross, open, turn, push, sink, lift, come to here like this, one, two, three, four, five. If you do it like that, your body goes through a whole different learning experience because now you're sort of recruiting different groups of muscles from your body. So if your body, if the musculature is creating a skeletal position, if your certain parts of your body is not working, then the skeletal positioning is not working. So you have to actually slow it down, use less strength, and you're really mind directing the movement, telling the brain, you know, which muscles have to work through that neurosynaptual 
uh, training. It's, that's what the brain is doing. It's building the correct neurons and the synapses to fire those muscle fibers to create the action. So you want a strong action that recruits a lot of fibers. You want a smooth movement it has to recruit sequentially. Because how do you get, you know, like if you had a locus of points, which is if you connect the dots, you can, if you don't have a lot of dots, it's kind of choppy, kind of blocky. You have a lot of dots, it becomes very smooth, right? So if you put all these dots in your body, in your brain, you have to connect all those dots and it becomes a smooth movement. So when we're like this, this is one, two, three. But if we go one, two, three, it becomes a little smoother, right? But it takes a lot more programming. So that's, you know, there's all, all, all the computer people here know that when you build a program, the more complex or the more things it has to do, the more of these points that you have to hit. So that's why when we're doing these movements, when we're turning, we're sinking, and we're driving or we're going one, two, or two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. 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 One, two. Okay, four. Okay, you can shake it up. So you see, when you build those movements like that, you start to build in the integration. Now, when we're here, after we did this first, fourth one, we stomp and we step. One, two, three, four. The accuracy of the footwork is important. When you open your stance and you get to where you are, you can't rush it. But if you're here and you rush it and then you go and your feet are all out of line, then you're going to have trouble finding your space because part of proprioception. So if you do it slowly, one, two, three, four, five, six, then your feet should be doing this. So if you go one, it should be the same when you speed it up because it's already programmed into the action. So when we do this one, two, three, it's slow. It's one, two, Three. But when he throws a punch, it's one. It's just there. So he throws one, no matter how fast it is, it's there. I don't have to overreact. So punch faster. <laughs> so so I, all you have to do, so he, th <laughs> so, so, so the thing is, you just have to move. You know because you know from doing this. But the thing is, you know, when he throws a punch, I'm over here. If I want to get over to this side, I go like this. You see? Because this hand is doing that. So you know this from this. You know this in the second form, first form, or whatever. The hand is just doing this. So when you're doing this and you're turning like this, that's what this is doing. So this side is doing this, this side is turning. Now it goes to the bottom, and you turn, it's big. So when you go one, two, three, one, two, three. You see, each hand knows where it's supposed to go as a body intelligence. So while we do this, we can do this all day long together because your brain kind of likes to work in pairs because it's kind of simple. But when this hand does this, and then it goes like this, and how does it know where to go? You learned it over time, because everything that we do in movement is learned. You're not born doing this kind of stuff. You have to actually 
first see it that you're capable of doing it. So when you're here and you turn, when we do this, this is the movement. One, two, three, four, one, two. So that's how we get into it. So the reason we have to do that to break it down is because this is a hook foot. It's called a cow gear. This is a shift of the weight. The hands go this way. You step here and you turn like this. But we talked about the hands and feet working together, right, as a relationship. Well, when this foot goes this way, this hand goes this way. So when I go like this, one, two, three, four. So you build first this, 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 foot, turn, this, and this. Then, it, then when you blend it, one, two, three, four. Then it comes out as a, a program position. So it's very important that the center line, this, is there. So because when you're striking your opponent, that's where it's going. Here to here. When you hook, it's that. Right? So how does this know to do that? It becomes a sudden movement. Yeah. Yeah. Step. Push. So you see how simple it is, right? We have all the little bits and pieces, but we can't put them together. It's like a puzzle. So that's what I try to get you to understand why it's so important. Now, when we do this, that's a, a curve, right? But what is this curve? It's half of one of these. We have one on each side. If I go like this, it's on the other side. We have one like this on the other side. If we go like this, we have one of each, right? So what is that? Right and left. But you're stepping forward, so it's right, left, and forward. And you're turning. So do we have a turn like this? We have a turn like this? How about this? Right. So we're doing it already. So the body kind of has some of that network built in here already. And it's in the body. Now you have to draw it out. So how do you draw it out? It has to it get drawn out from frequency of movement and be able to identify with it, you know, internally, innately. It comes out by itself because it becomes intrinsic. Your body kind of has this information in it, and then it taps into it. Right. So, so, so those are just kind of samples of what we're doing. So the, you know, so the form is not just a bunch of movements that we've memorized. That's like the first level. Try to get your body to work with it, right? So when we lift, it's in the back. When we sink, it's in the front. But it's not totally just back and front because your body is in two halves. It's one piece that one side goes like this and one side goes like this. So one side has to relax, the other side has to well, the back relaxes as you sink, or your back bends, and the front releases. It depends on the type of action you're producing. So when you lift, the body lifts up. When you sink, the body goes down. So any of your movements that are actions, when you lift, that's a rise. When you press, that's a fall. When you thrust, there's an extension. But because we're standing on our feet, we have to compensate for the direction of force. Because if force is only in one direction, then, then this force overcomes your center of mass and the falling forward. But why don't we fall forward? We fall forward because our body has a response mechanism. It doesn't allow you to fall forward because when you do this, your body creates an equal opposite reaction. So when we do this, that's equal opposite. Everybody knows that in the hands. But when we do this, we do this, we do this, does your body detect that response? The less tense your body is, the more sensitivity it has. So relaxing the body allows you to have that sensitivity of detection. And that sensitive detection comes into play when you, when you block, 
you sense where the forces are enter your body. So if you have a block of wood because you're rigid, it doesn't detect anything. It's just stiff. So that's what we try to avoid is that uh, to be like the wooden dummy. We don't want to be, they call them mung in. You, know, you don't want to be stiff. You want to be relaxed. So when we go through the movements, there's a phase of relaxing, there's a phase of intensity to allow for the dimensional changes. All right, so let's let's go through that again. Just to, yeah. Do say it again. Yeah, Lao. So I, I just exaggerated that because because when we're in the um, okay in the cover in a big position, the next thing we're gonna do is turn, right? So you see, my body is doing this. Because if I let this upper part go, then actually there's no strength in your torso. You have to maintain strength here so you're ready like a spring wound up so you can go like this. Now when you turn, why is it I go like this, I turn, and I don't do that? Be because you're compensating for your movement. There's a Equal opposite, boom. But the thing is, this leg becomes the root of the movement. If you don't have strength here, then you actually will overturn. But the reason why it doesn't go over there is because the hand is not leading the movement. The centrifugal force, or the, the it's the transition between here and here. My arm really is not... Yeah, because if you did, then the, this and this would dominate the movement. It just, this, this actually is passive. It just, it goes with it. But it's only there as a position. Because when you, there's two ways you can do this. You can pick like this, follow like this, and you see it on top. I could do it like this, pick, turn, and separate this way. So the secondary hand is to do this or this. So when I allow this hand, if I sink it, the elbow, it does this. If I go like this, it becomes that. So it really depends how you adjust this side. So when I'm here and I turn, then I would be like that. You see? Yeah. So, th so this movement, when you pick, if I come into this, is in a horse stance, right? And I come into this position, I'm not doing this. I'm doing this. So you don't even see the hand, right? Because when I'm here, my my body's check and then turn, right? So. He, he was exaggerating, but but that's what happens because when you're here, you look at this, but it's in here. The power really came from here, here, here. So that's why the back strength is so important. And the, yeah, do that again. Yeah, winding up, boom, shoot. Yeah, yeah. So it's in your back. How many people have back problems? Yeah, but yeah, because because the back is usually tense. But when you do this, it's moving because it's balanced. You know, your two, the spine is has two sets of muscles on each side. If they're always working together, you're gonna have a problem with your back because one side would get tight and then you end up pulling your spine out of line. But if you're moving your back voluntarily, then your back is always going to be somewhat you know, more aware so your body can respond. So that here's your back, here's your back, here's your back. There's the lower lumbar area, upper. So your neck, 
they're all different parts of the vertebrae that have different movements. Show the application of a big. This is big, right? So it doesn't go beyond that. So a cover hand is followed up with a big. So big is kind of an inside movement when you're close to your opponent. So a big typically is, I'll use Sunny. Yeah, is when his hand comes here, you cover. And a pick is a follow-up. So they go hand in hand. A pick and a cover. Okay, if I go like this, one, two. This becomes a pick. So when the hand is here, it becomes here. When I turn like this. So that's how a pick is. Yeah. And it's, a, it's, it's in, if I do this softly here, once it's here, if I want to move into this, I don't do this. I do this. It's in the sliding step. So I'm here. One, two. If I want to sink here, then I come this way. So that becomes that. So that's why this and this go together. The big, see, like you cover, right? So hand comes here. See? You see, when I'm here, then this would come out. So the big is this. So the, Again, it's coming here, then here. So this and this is the cover. So when you're here, cover, pick, then I go like this to allow. But this and this, this and this is really just learning to use your back. Just like in that next part of the form, you punch, you cut, you pick. The pick, all you just have to rise, you, you lift your spine and rise a little bit and then sink. So rising and falling uses your body imagery to create the force going down. So it turned, yeah. Yeah. You can go all the way up. But the thing is, the pow is usually... Um, separate because when you're moving this is very close if you go like this you actually will lose your position so you don't want to follow a pick with a pow you don't want to. it is you pass through the position but when you're here you so a, a, a pow is usually this when I cover a pow is this this is an elbow break yeah 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 but generally, because it's coming lower, right? If, if I just do this, intercept here, a middle block like this, right? So I, here, I can turn that to a big. Because what I did was I moved into fold. So if I'm here, I fold. Now I'm here. Now if I want to use that to redirect the force here, then it's like that. Absolutely did not expect that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, you see. Yeah, so, yeah. So in this position, when it's like this, this is exposed, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a counter. It, it it's here, then here. Now this hand becomes soft so the hands yeah yeah so so you're not using strength on both sides it's called that's the yin yang of movement your passive movement one this is becomes active then it becomes passive now this is a position if you go like this and you lift that's what you're doing with the power so here 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 so essentially what it teaches you is to reap down and lift up there and here. So while you go like this, this is the motion motion on the way down. So that becomes, if I go like this, I go like this, then this becomes a downward motion. This would be a downward motion if I were to use it as a as a pull down, and which is kind of what I did there. But I turned. If I turn then the movement is here. 
but because your hand is here, you see what happens. One, two, three. There's my elbow. Right? You press the elbow, and that <laughs> you, you you're gonna gonna hit yourself. Yeah. So that's why when you do your movement on the shell, you see the the the, the body motion, but it's really everything is just kind of a give and take. Yeah. So that's this idea. If I go like this and she presses here, and this comes down, that's borrowing her her strength. That's borrowing strength. Yeah. So it doesn't take any effort to hit yourself. Right. You just right. So, anyways, so you can see when you do your form, even though it's the same sequence and you come to practice it, you look you're building the geometry of your position, and I I like to always talk about that because it kind of reinforces everything we do. So it doesn't matter which form, it's the same idea. And your body, you know, when we talk about the, the skeletal structure, the muscles that you recruit is something that's a voluntary action. So it's really the mind over the matter. You have to really use the mind intent, the conscious intent. And then you start to feel the movement and how your body will go will develop. So, but it it's uh, you know it's it's pretty amazing. We have a a pretty advanced age group here. You know, fifty and up, except for maybe Tom. Tom Tom's not Tom's like a young guy. But the thing is, you know, we can still do this even at a at a at a older age. I mean, I still can do these, and I'm actually I'm almost seventy one. I'm going to be seventy one in a couple of months but the thing is you know I don't feel like this is a 70 year old man movement it's just a movement but it doesn't it doesn't take any strength really so I think that's important as you age to be efficient and effective with your movements not necessarily with this but just you know to be functional as you as you uh, you know, age and go through the, the daily process of what you have to do. Uh, so happens I do this and I use this as, you know, vehicle to practice movement, but I've been doing this a long time, so it's really kind of effortless for me. Um, okay, so let's go through uh, Fuk Fu, eighth form, first form, uh, first part of Gungji we already did. So this is a little more intense, a lot of footwork, a lot of directional stuff going on here. All right, ready? Go. Hup. Hup. Continue. Okay, so deep breathing. So if you practice faster with intensity, then it becomes an aerobic exercise. You slow it down, it becomes a training for the technical skills that are involved. So there's different ways of practicing depending on what you're trying to get out of it. Each posture can be practiced separately, but you know, it's it's just how you understand the training. So you always work with the worst movements. If your left side is not good, you work the left side because you have to kind of program it into your system. And then as you evolve, all, all this stuff starts to fall into place. So, you know, a lot of people have gotten their second shot, so they should be coming back. So, if we're, can you imagine if we, 
survived this pandemic and then Roman comes back, you know, in four or five years, we can, we have a, we can claim that we have one of the oldest schools in, in, uh, oldest schools in wherever in the, in the country. But I don't mean time-wise, I mean people that are older. <laughs> well, <laughs> No, no, it's true. We have some of the, uh, we have a lot of, you know, like, elderly people here that are in their 70s, that are in 80s, actually. You know, Otis just turned 86. So, and Bob, when he comes back, he's like 80-something. So, we can total up all the ages, and we can take an average, and we could say, well, we're probably around 72. I did that at uh, Belmont, and the average age was about 62. Huh? Yeah. Um, that's, yeah, as an average of people doing the Tai Chi. Um, no, because we have, uh, you know, some a few younger people doing it in every India. So, but that's, uh, anyways. So any, any questions, Tom, any questions? No. All right, so that's what we're trying to figure out. Now, when you're doing your weapons, it's the same, the same group of muscles that are working, but the intent, the motion, the coordination, if we're doing the butterfly, you know, it's the same actions. You don't have to force anything. The movements are there, and you just go through the motions. Same footwork, same body positions, all of this stuff is the same. As long as you get your body wired, you're not... Is you, these moves are not going to be foreign to you. You know what you're doing. I mean, I'm, you know, when you do your stick form and you're doing the monkey stick or you're doing this, you know, it's like what you do with the kayak. You know, you're moving your hands. A, this movement is just this. This movement with the with the monkey stick is just churning like this, but it's on a direction like this. If we do this, or we do this, that's in the five images or ten images. All the hands are doing is doing this. And you're cranking and turning. If you're doing this, that's reversing the ball. When we, like what Paul's doing, it's lifting and lifting and lifting. So, corner back fist is really this position spread out to here. So you just turn from here to here, here to here. So you have to get that position so you're not not too linear. And you're turning. See, this is a turn. This is a turn. So when you're doing Fu Fu and you're turning, it's from here to here to here. Now, because we're wound up here, like Lao Jiang, you turn and track that movement so that you have a line that's consistent because when you're doing this when my hand comes across it's here so why do, don't you go like this and why don't you go like this because some people actually do this actually this has no strength because your, your joint is out of position you're going to strain your shoulder you don't go like this because you'll end up falling backwards so once you reach your limit then you have to take it down. So all you do is settle and sink. So what do you sink? This. Right. I don't want to hit your arm, but like that. Yeah, because you have to work tomorrow. <laughs> I might hurt myself. No, but it's like this. Boom. So when you sink, boom, it's like that. So you hear, boom, boom. So the idea in that movement is to deflect and then punch, right? So this is actually here, boom, and then punch. You could chun kill, like a chun kill, like this. Then I strike, right? What, uh, after I strike, she, she bends out, boom, you strike with this hand. So it's like that. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's what you're doing. One, two, three, four. So it's just one, two cycle. 
So the closer the hands become together, the faster it appears to be. But it's really this, because this is coming simultaneously, so you have speed. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't, don't put on. Yeah. Okay, we'll bow. Ready? Hup. Okay. That's it. What? <laughs>